What's up guys, Patrick here, tour guide and your guide to Barcelona and today we're visiting the Casa Milà or La Pedrera, made by that guy, Antoni Gaudi. One of the most common questions I get on modernism tours in the city is if a visit to the Casa Milà is worth it. Not only was it the last house built by Antoni Gaudi, but it forms part of the incredible architectural heritage left by the modernist period on one of Barcelona's most famous streets. It's probably on your list of things to do in Barcelona, and today I'm going to take you inside to help you decide for yourself if it's worth the visit. Remember, there are all different types of visits available, from daily tours to evening shows on the roof. Just make sure to book online. It's cheaper than buying at the door. The Casa Milà was designed by Antoni Gaudí between 1906 and 1912 and would be the last house he would ever be involved with before turning his attention to the Sagrada Familia. Different from the rest of Gaudí's houses where you can find nature in the house, the Casa Milà looks like you could find the house in nature. Part of that has to do with its nickname La Pedrera, which means stone quarry. Take one look and you'll understand why. You can find La Pedrera at the top of the Paseo de Gracia, not far from the diagonal metro stop, and it's within walking distance from other famous Gaudi houses like the Casa Patio or even the Casa Vicente. While we call it a house, it's really an apartment building that was paid for by Pere Milà and his wife Rosé to house various different tenants. I've always thought it was Gaudi's most interesting private property in terms of storylines, with changes and problems from the get-go. One of my favorite stories about the house is because the way it's constructed and that the facade doesn't hold actually any of the weight, it's all done by interior columns, one of the columns on the facade sticks out a little bit further than the rest of the building. And the government didn't really want this to happen. They didn't want the building to be sticking out further into the sidewalk. So Gaudí says basically he's gonna shave off the column and where they destroy it, he's gonna put a big plaque that says destroyed by the government or the city of Barcelona. And as you can see, there's no plaque here. The rest of the facade is covered with different types of stone and the lack of straight lines, something common in Gaudi's work, runs throughout the building, something you'll later see on the inside. Like any visit to a Gaudi built house, you have to see the rooftop. Gaudi's capacity to turn ordinary chimneys into works of art is always fascinating. At the Casa Milà, you'll not only find chimneys, but vents and statues that create a forest of crosses and warrior-like helmets. You'll also find great views of the city and realize what a privileged vantage point the Casa Milà offered its inhabitants. It's an amazing way to start your visit. One of the questions I get a lot is what's on the inside of these blocks that you'll see in the Eixample. And up here, you can see for yourself. We're in the attic of the Casa Milà, and I don't want to give too much away, but this is one of the places that Dan Brown used in his novel Origin that partly took place in Barcelona. The attic was where the laundry was done for the building. Today it's a museum to Gaudi's genius. One thing you'll notice are the catenary arches throughout, which were so important in the Sagrada Familia or even the Colonia Guel. You can always learn so much in each of Gaudi's houses. And even here you can see how he figured out how to make the Colonia Guel church that he was working on at the exact same time as he was working on the house here. I've always been in love with the doorknobs that Gaudi created. And here you'll find an exhibit explaining the correct hand position for each piece. It's something that seems so trivial, but speaks to Gaudi's attention to detail. Believe it or not, three apartments are still used today. What you'll visit is an example of an early 19th century apartment. Make sure you look down to see the tiles when you first enter. You can see they're the same tiles they used to decorate the street outside. These are the originals with the colors and all. Not everyone was a fan of the interior. Even the Milá family apartment was changed shortly after Gaudi's death because Rosé was never fully convinced about the architect. 
It's a free-flowing space that lacks straight lines like we saw from the outside. It's not a common outline and maybe didn't accommodate everyone's needs. Story has it that when Gaudi was asked where a piano was supposed to fit, he recommended playing the violin. So now that you've seen what the house is like on the inside and out, it's up for you to decide. Remember, this is Gaudi's last house. The views from the terrace alone are definitely worth it, but just to get an idea for the last thing that he's going to build before solely dedicating himself to the Sagrada Familia, I think is always worth your time if you want to really understand kind of what's going on here in Barcelona. As always, thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you out, helped you answer some of those questions you had about going inside the Casa Mila or not. If it gave you any sort of value, give it that thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe so that you can see other videos about not only Gaudí's architecture, but other things to do while you're here in Barcelona.